Previously on the vlog, we took a ferry journey from Prince Edward Island in Atlantic Canada to our next van life destination in the province of Quebec. We really enjoy our crossing experience, but now it is time for us to explore one of Canada's top kept secret destinations of Magdalen Islands. We have arrived in Ile de la Magdalene. I think I said it right. If you are new around here, we are Halif and Michael, the round the world guys. We've been traveling full time since 2019, and with our German Shepherd Kana, have been exploring the beautiful North American landscapes in our camper van. Hey guys, good morning from Magellan Islands. We arrived here yesterday with a five hour ferry journey from Prince Edward Island, which is the only way to get here by land. So yes, Magellan Islands is quite remote. A lot of people said that Magellan Islands is one of Canada's best kept secret destinations. And we are so excited to finally be able to be here. So in this video, we're gonna discover why Magellan Islands is one of Canada's best kept secret destinations. And we're gonna explore the islands from north to the south to the west and east, eat some delicious thing and enjoying the fabulous scene of the islands. And we're gonna start right here at the Gros Cap, which is not too far away from, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher all the wording here in French, Cap of Moise which is the facto capital city of Magellan Islands. This is where the ferry arrived. And what a beautiful day. It does not feel like Canada at all. According to what I've heard, this is the most popular camping site here on Magdalen Islands. There are hundreds of sites here and we do have a boondocking site located next to the cliff but you also have a lot of big rigs here that has full service. Also a tent. Even though this is part of Quebec, Magdalen Islands is Acadian. So everywhere you go on the island, you can see the famous Acadian flags, which basically a French flag with a single yellow star in the corner. As you can see, the rock here are very fragile. In fact, you can see all the signs everywhere throughout the islands. To warn you that the edge can collapse at any time. For instance, this campground has a fence so that people don't go over the fence just for the safety reason. Because we are on the island, there's a lot of water activities, there's a lot of beach and here in Gross Cap, you can rent a kayak for 65 bucks and that lasts for three hours. Why wouldn't you? People really enjoy the beach here too. I know I'm gonna butcher all the French names, so I apologize in advance. We are currently in the Port de Havre Albert. This is the southern tip of the uh, Magdalen Islands. They have a little community here, but they also have a port that we're gonna explore a little bit just to show you what it's all about. Fishing is quite an industry here on the islands, and there's a lot of lobster traps that we've seen so far everywhere. And here at the pier, there's a lot of boats. It's nice to walk around and interact with some locals. <laughs> Who knew? By the end of this trip, I will be fluent in French. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> so this stretch of town is really cute. They have a lot of shops and cafes, restaurants that people enjoy. This is just really, really small area, but it is so picturesque. I love the backdrop of this. In the far beyond, it's just so dramatically landscape and cute houses. Oh, what not to love about this part of the islands? Quebec. 
Quebec, 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 Quebec. So far everywhere we go on these islands, uh, we never seen any other plates than Quebec one plates. Sure, we are in Quebec, but with tourists pretty much everywhere, we thought that we we're gonna see more people outside Quebec, but no, <laughs> nobody else is not from Quebec but us. That makes us pretty special, I suppose. Café de la Grave, the Grave Café. There's a hotel back there it's called Hotel de la Grave. It just seems significant, I guess, before we've been taking photos of it. <laughs> but it looks sort of creepy in a cartoony way. But that's probably one of my favorite ones, actually, building here in yeah. Check out the view from our back window. <laughs> Isn't this wild? <laughs> it's so pretty. Love it here. A good campground stay comes with some camping experience essentials. We need some coins. Yup, shower here requires coins to operate. It is a pretty straightforward process. What a douche. A five minute shower for a dollar. Anything to make you feel clean and fresh, obviously. Scrolling in. Bonjour, Mr. Jean Bernard Leblanc. Good morning to you too. So unfortunately today is not the uh, picturesque sunny day to show you around but it is a reality here in the Maritimes. You know, this happens quite a bit. However, we are still ongoing with the plan for the day. We're gonna explore this area, even though it's kind of foggy and cloudy, but we're gonna make the most of it. Let's go on with a bike. The bike tour. <laughs> Isn't this fantastic? <laughs> it's a beautiful landscape altogether. Being such as remote as it is, I was so surprised to find that Magdalen Islands have a few big grocery stores, including here in Cap of Mules. There's an IGA co-op. There are actually two IGA co-ops here on the islands. And this is a very good grocery store with a lot of options. Pretty much normal grocery store. They have necessities. <laughs> As the name implies, Maglin Islands are a series of little islands that are connected by road, and that's called a Highway 199, which connects the islands from the south all the way to north. And yes, there is a fog rolling in. Just like a normal days, I suppose, in Magellan Islands or the Maritimes. But what can you do? Right behind me is one of the most significant churches here on Magellan Islands. This is Saint Pierre de la Venier. Pardon me if I pronounce it wrong, but this is Saint Peter's Church. And I was told that this is the second largest wooden church in North America. And it was built out of shipwreck wood. Sounds interesting, so we're gonna see whether we can go inside. But from the outside, it is quite impressive to look at, even though this is located next to a major highway. <laughs> All of these years, I did not realize that Saint Pierre is Saint Peter in French. Now I know, because the statue is holding the key to Kingdom of Heaven. That's how I know it's Saint Peter. Let's see inside. And this St. Peter Church is one of Canada's National Historical Monument. I can understand why. This is the most elaborate church here in Magdalen Islands, without a doubt.
Isn't this neat? They have lobster traps and ships and a lighthouse as part of the altar. I'm not sure how religious the people in Magdalen Islands are, but there are a handful of churches around the island and this is one of them. Let me try to say this particular church name correctly. This is the English Soccer Corps de Grand Entron. And I really like the location of this church next to the ocean. I did not expect that at all, that the church is open. But let's check out what's inside. Okay, it's a beautiful church. I really like it. Everywhere I go in the world, I typically love to come into a Catholic church because a lot of times it is integrated into their local culture. And in this case, there's an altar dedicated to Mother Mary and there are some fishing theme. And I assume the whole altar is dedicated to protecting fishermen in the sea. It's pretty neat. It's a little bit creepy. And right now we are crossing to the very last island. We are leaving the Gros Isle. No, we are leaving the Gros Isle towards the Grand Entree. <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna be so fluent in French after this. This is my next destination. Gros Isle is the home of a handful Anglophone community here in Magdalen Islands. As an English speaking community, they needed a place to worship. This is the Anglican Church, which is a very unusual for Magdalen Islands. But I really wanted to see this church because two things. One, the original structure of this church was built back in 1850s. It was built out of a shipwreck, which is sort of cool. And number two, I'm going to show you inside. It's a very unique feature of this church. Place of worship, so I'll take off my hat. Wow, it smells old. Come with me and I will make you fishers of men. One thing I want to show you is the main stained glass. At the uh, main altar piece, there are three stained glass windows. And in the middle piece is Jesus wearing a fisherman outfit because he is one of the locals here on Magellan Islands and he's even wearing rubber boots. <laughs> Michael has a very valid point that back in 2000 years ago, there wasn't rubber. So what's up with that, Church of England? Lock back up. I love how everybody's trusting each other here. There's no lock or any safety mechanism. Uh, it doesn't mean you know you can do anything you want, but you can just walk in 24 hours a day to pray. There are a lot of English people in Gros Isle. So as a result, you can find a lot of bilingual signs, both French and English. For example, this beach is a famous beach up here. It's called the Old Harry. Sounds English to me. Old Harry Beach in the foggy day. <laughs> in a lot of ways, you don't really expect to find beaches like this in Quebec or even in Canada. However, there are plenty of beaches like this in Madeline Islands. Therefore, this place is a unique place for sure. Look at this. This is a very soft sand. So this is a very pleasant beach to be playing around in. Maybe not in a foggy day, but this is a very nice sand. It didn't deter anybody to not enjoying the beach, so good for you. Oh, the gift shop is firm, closed. <sighs> the saddest day of our stay here, the bakery is closed. Hope grandma's okay. There are a lot of shops, souvenir shops, also museums, and this is one of them. It's a pottery museum, so we're gonna check out what they have. Lots and lots of pottery here. <laughs> and a local demonstration in the shop too. Perfect timing. <laughs> a tour bus just arrived. <laughs> this place gonna make a million selling pottery to this lady. We are currently in the Fumor Dantan. So this is one of the destinations that people like to go to check out here in Magellan Islands. This is basically a smokehouse for herring mostly and there are some other seafood that probably they get preserved here. In the rainy day, this is an indoor type of activities today. Check out the inside. 
Fulmore Danton is a very well curated bilingual museum on herring industry in Maidun Islands. It highlights the process of preserving the herring, which includes the life of the fishermen back in the days. And there's an informational video play here at the uh, herring smokehouse. Unfortunately, all in French and there's no English translation. So Michael can understand what's happening and I'm just trying to figure out myself. Our favorite part about visiting this place is to be able to see the historical smokehouse where the distinctive smell of herring, wood, and smoke still linger in the air. It smells like smoke herring. There's a lot of seafood here being preserved. And of course, we ended our journey here at the gift shop where we bought a few delicacies from Meglin Islands to try at home. Yum! This inspires me to learn how to speak French. Not really. Time to take a break from the heat. Oh, pardon, monsieur. It's a friendly local. So we decided to get some coffee and lemonade. And next time on the vlog, we dive deeper into the Magdalen Islands food scene, where we experience a delicious culinary adventure around the archipelago. So stick around by subscribing to our channel to follow along with our journey. Thank you for watching. We're done. They don't really want to go away. But all right, it's discovering. So the Magdalen Islands. It's French. The island of Gros Il is an English colony. Uh, that's not actually the word for it. Oops.